Alright, as you can see, I've moved some of my polygons around to get a better fit around the body. Just kind of took my time, shaped it a little better, and I'm going to show you a few extra tricks that you can use for adding some more polygons in a quick method, easy way, especially for beginners, uh, to enable you for even more advanced shaping. So in order to do this, uh, with it still an edible poly, I never applied a smooth to it. As you can see, mine's still nice and boxy. Uh, it's still the basic shape. I'm going to go ahead and select my element tool. Uh, I'm going to select all the armor. And I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to scroll down. And remember our nice little friend, the M Smooth tool? Uh, it'll be an edit geometry, so you can just grab the little window and move it up and down until you find it. It's an edit geometry. You find M Smooth. Now I want you to see what happens when I press it. So I'm going to go up here to Realistic. I'm going to select that, and I'm going to go to Hidden Line. Now watch what happens when I press M Smooth. These are the polygons, each of these little squares. I select M Smooth, and watch what happens. Whoa, it just increased the account of polygons. and They're still nice and squared and boxy, so I can still work with them. Now I'm going to go into Realistic. As you can see, if I you know, deselect the element, it kind of smoothed it out, but it also screwed up uh, right here in front of the breast. The nipples are kind of coming through, so i got to come over here real fast before I do anything else. Uh, deselect all the elements, and then I want to select just up here where the breasts are coming through, and you know, right there. And I can just move it out a little bit on the X plane. Now they're out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a neat tool. I mean, this is really awesome tools called face extrusion to give our armor a little bit of depth. In order to do this, all I'm going to do is I'm going to select my polygon tool. I'm going to go to realistic. I'm going to change this down to hidden line gives me a better idea of which polygons I'm selected. And I'm going to go through, well you can turn off use soft selection. I'm going to go through and I'm going to select the parts of the armor that I want to extrude. I'm going to create sort of a barrier around my armor, just this rim. Actually I'm not going to select these. I'm going to go up even one higher layer. I'm just going to select all the way. Uh, ignore that. Oops. Well, there we go. Ignore that little pop-up there, my bad. I'm going to select all the way around in a line all these little polygons. You know, and I'm going to keep it in a line because what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude these from the mesh to create what looks like a rim you know, going around the armor. So I'm just going to keep going around and selecting them in a straight line all the way around the armor. And I want to do a brim on the bottom of the armor as well. So I'm going to do the same thing down there. I'm going to go to the bottom. And I'm going to select this line right here. Right along the bottom rim of the armor. This is a really neat tool. Face extrusion just gives so much depth and realism to the armor. I'm going to right click and use my select tool so I don't actually move any of these. I'm holding down the control key and I'm just left clicking uh, each of these polygons some basic polygon uh, modeling right here. I'm going to keep going around. Selecting all the polygons. Alright, now with all of the polygons selected that I want to move out on the same level, I'm going to drop down my modifier list and I'm going to go to Face Extrusion. It should be in the list here. It's alphabetical. So I went too far. Face extrude. Select that modifier. Now how much do I want it to extrude? Well, I'm going to zoom in on it and kind of watch it as I do it. Now watch what happens when I hit this. See, I take it up to uh, a 1. Look how far out that goes. Look at that. That's kind of neat, huh? It extrudes it anywhere from where I selected it. So this kind of gives, gives the armor even more character. It's just a neat little tool you can use to give your armor this appearance that it was crafted. You know, and then I, I can round this off even you know, with, uh, with another smooth, using the actual smooth uh, modifier. But I think one, I like the way that turned out. I'm going to go ahead and leave it. So I'm going to right click on my mesh. I'm going to go convert to editable poly. Every time you do something like a face extrude, you want to reconvert it to an editable poly. I can still kind of see those nipples. So I'm going to go to realistic again. And I know in realistic I can't see it, but I'm going to go ahead and just select here and move it out a little bit. Now, I need a soft selection back on, or I'll be moving a few and not what I want to. And I'm going to set it to a 5. You know, just kind of get really focused in that area. See, now that I have it uh, even more polygons, I can get even more accurate with the shaping. 
so I can come in and find different areas that I want to move and say mm, I think I should probably select a little more than that so I'll take it up to a 7 you see mine's actually starting to look really neat now. I mean I took this cylinder and I turned it into a whole nother level. You know, I took this thing way out there. Now look at it. Wow, this is neat. This actually turned out pretty cool. Um, that's a cool looking breastplate. Now again, I want you to spend your time because this is important, you know. I want you, I'm actually trying to work with you here to, so that you can create something really defined, something that you're impressed with. You personally are like, wow, this is neat. I can't believe I made this. And then you're going to share it with people, or you know, if you want to, I'm going to share mine. I'm actually going to take this armor that I'm making in this tutorial right now. I'm going to share this with the community. I'm actually going to upload this to the Nexus um, when we're all said and done so people can see my work and you know, download it and use it and uh, even uh, up, you know, use it and take you know maybe even if they want to they can take it and uh, import it into 3ds max you know if you download this so you can see you know how mine turned out you know and how I move stuff around so now I can get uh, I can do more with the armor because it's has more polygons so I can even get it closer and more defined to the body which is it's all I'm doing right now Just moving stuff closer because now I can add more stuff to make it you know even more cooler looking this is all about you just taking your time. Again, it's you are the potter and this is your clay. So, all right, now I'm pretty happy with that. Now, you see I did that face extrude. That was another little tool that you can use for modeling. Now let's say, what if I wanted those uh, edges to be rounder? All I'd have to do is go up here to my modifier list, drop it down, and select smooth. Now I get to see kind of what it would look like if I put a smooth on it. Uh, do I want it to look like this? Yeah, I think that'll look pretty cool when I throw some texture on it and make it look like armor. Yeah, make it look like it's plate or something along that lines. So this is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and leave that on there. So if I want to keep that smooth on there and keep the polygon shaping the way that I have it, I'm going to right click it and convert it to an editable poly. Anytime you make a major change like smoothing something or a mesh smooth, you should always reconvert it to an editable poly. Think of editable poly, or, or rather, think of converting the armor uh, as uh, the same concept as a reset button. You reset the mesh to its new shape and that is now what the object looks like. So there's no additional modifiers making it look that way. Uh, and this will also hinder you from, let's say you created an arm and you tried to upload it into the game and it doesn't show up. Well, the reason for that could be that you didn't reset the mesh and you need to reset it before you export it, you know, and add all the skin wrapping and all that. So, just a neat tool, the face extrusion. That's what I was kind of building up to. I want you to make your own now. Take your time. Uh, build something completely unique. Oh, and one more little trick that I want to show you is, you know, I've been moving multiple vertices to kind of create the shape. Another thing you can do is select a single vertice. Like, uh, let's say I select one right here, and I control click, and I select kind of the same one on the other side of the armor. Now, if I move one vertice, watch what happens. Look at that. That's kind of neat. I can make these spikes in my armor now. Like, if I wanted to add a bunch of spikes along, I could do that that way. You know? I'm not going to do that because I kind of like it looking rounded. Um, you can shape your armor that way. Like if I wanted to add a spike here, I do it that way. And if you look at it from the side, now it's this spike. And in paint, whenever I paint the armor, I can make that actually look like you know it's supposed to be there. But again, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you another way to add spikes. An easier way than doing it this way is to actually create cylinders. I think I will add a few spikes to this, maybe. Uh, along the brim. I might add some balls around the brim using uh, just circles, just you know, easy stuff. Uh, I'll probably do that and I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Again, I just created my breastplate. I'm really impressed with the way it looks. Uh, I want you to take your time, make your breastplate how you want yours to look. I actually might create some kind of drop here so it's not so rounded, maybe kind of give an even better curve around the breast. So Use my soft selection, take this up to a 10. I should have done this before, but I didn't, so I'll just do it now. Kind of look at it from the sides. Yeah, that's pretty neat. I like that. That's that's really cool. So here's my breastplate. This is uh, what the front part of my armor is going to look like. So I'll go ahead and paint it, which you guys already know how to do. We went through that in a previous tutorial. 
Um, again, here's my armor. I'm pretty happy with it. And it's always a good idea before you paint to unwrap the UVW, of course. And you want to also, before you do anything else to it, always, when you're done modeling it, always convert it to an editable mesh. Or basically hit the reset button. All right, I'm done modeling this armor. I'm happy with the way it looks. Uh, this is the base of the armor. I'm not going to make any more changes to it. I'm really happy with it. So, again, this was mine. Make your own. This one's mine. You can have it. Make your own. And as soon as you're done making your own really cool one using the uh, tools and just watching what I did, or you could even go and watch a few polygon tutorials. 3ds Max has tons of tutorials on uh, modeling with polygons. I've just shown you some basics. There's way more you can do with this stuff. Um, once you once you got yours set up, you can go ahead and uh, convert you know convert it to an editable mesh, and then uh, go ahead and unwrap your UVW so you can paint it. So I'm gonna go from my modifier list. I'm gonna go ahead and drop it down. I'm gonna go in here to my modifier pane, find unwrap UVW, and make sure that that line is on the side. See that line's in a really good location. So on the side, it'll be under an arm, kind of hidden, so I won't have to worry about it. I'm done unwrapping the UVW. I go down here to open UV editor, if you recall. Now see I have the circle, that's the top and the bottom of the cylinder and it's overlapping the rest of the arm. If I try to paint this it would look awful. So you always want to go down here. Easy way to work with, with this here uh, is you can just click pack normalize. Select that. It gets everything not on top of each other. Remember this is your canvas you're going to paint on this so you don't want stuff overlaying. And once you've done the done that you just go ahead and close this window and right click on the armor and select convert to editable mesh all right now before I start painting on it I want to make sure that I go ahead and export it so I don't lose any of the work that I've done and you know in case 3ds decides to crash while I'm playing around in 3d uh, in the viewport or if I want to re-import it so I'm gonna right click I'm gonna select unfreeze all and just in case you had something hidden right click and select unhide all now we need to skin it so we're gonna select the armor from the modifier paint, we're going to drop it down and we're going to select smooth, which shouldn't do anything, and then select two. All right, that's taken care of. It's uh, and now that it's smooth, we're going to go down, and add a skin wrap to it. Go from the drop down, go down here and find skin wrap. Select skin wrap. Uh, let's go to face deformation. We'll make sure we weight everything, and we're going to select add, and we're going to select the body. Give it a minute. It's um, I guess it already took care of it. So I'll go ahead and select convert to skin. Uh, right click this. I'm going to make sure that it's skinned it. So I'm going to select the skin, select edit envelopes, and I can already see that parts of the armor are highlighting. Uh, I'm just going to check the arms to make sure nothing stuck to the arm. It doesn't look like anything did. So just looking at a couple of the ones around the arm, and I don't see anything looking like it's yellow. Everything looks fine. So I'm just selecting a couple here, a couple of these arm bones. Make sure I don't have to fix anything. That looks fine. Again, the easiest, by far easiest way to fix this problem for a beginner is to just grab the vertices around that area and move them away. Just move the armor away from the problem areas. Everything looks fine. The armor skin just, you know, just dandy. All right, so I'm happy with it. I'm going to deselect edit envelopes. Now I have skin selected. I'm going to drop down and find my BS dismember skin modifier. I'm going to zoom out, make sure all the polygons are selected and in body part select Skyrim torso 1 or in many of your cases it's Skyrim main body and I'm going to select create to get off of it I'm going to file and I'm going to go ahead and export this so I don't lose any of my work and from my drop down I'll find my UMP custom armors and we're going to go to data meshes armor you know we never created a file for this uh, so let's go ahead and just keep working in Daedric if you want to back up the Daedric work that you've already done you can I'm just gonna save over mine and test one uh, so you can probably back this folder up before you export if you want and you don't want to lose your original bikini that you worked with before I'm just gonna go into Daedric then go into test one and then save as type I drop down the menu here select NIF and I'm gonna select Daedric Torso F underscore zero and select save says do I want to replace it yes because I don't want that bikini anymore don't need it all, right, all your settings should be the same as mine we don't want to weld anything remember and then select export 